And welcome back to Square Off. Cindy McCain had her maverick moment this past week. The widow of the 2008 Republican presidential nominee, John McCain, is endorsing the 2020 Democratic presidential nominee, Joe Biden. I'll ask our next guest, Michael Steele, MSNBC commentator, former head of the Republican National Committee, now a senior advisor to the Lincoln Project, whether that endorsement will make a difference. Michael Steele, welcome to Sunday Square Off. Hey, it's great to be with you. But what do you think about that? You know, here in Arizona, 90% of Arizona Republican voters are pretty firmly behind President Trump. Cindy McCain believes she can peel off some of them. What kind of impact do you think her endorsement will make here and with Republicans or independents around the country? Um, so the fact that Cindy McCain uh, put her imprimatur on this race by supporting uh, Biden uh, says a lot. It says a lot about the, the gravity of, the, of this race for the nation. It says a lot about her commitment um, in, in the wake of her husband's passing to public service. Um, and making sure that good leaders emerge uh, to fulfill the requirements of public service. And, and of course, with respect to the independent and center-right, center-left voters that you uh, mentioned, um, I, think it, I think it can help shape for them, uh, particularly those who are still kind of parsing through and trying to figure out, All right, do I really want to vote for Joe or do I really want to vote for Biden? Having this kind of... of thrust from a, a, a person like Cindy, I think it's important. People weigh these things surprisingly enough. They, they may not tip the scales, but they do have an impact and they do uh, reshape at the edges, at least for some voters, how they look at these races. So the Lincoln Project is dominated by Republicans. One of the leaders is John McCain's former campaign manager. Are you all comfortable with a Joe Biden administration and what that might bring to the country? Well, as, as I like to tell people, this election is not about a specific policy. It is about the country. It is about how we collectively pull ourselves out of, up out of the morass we are now in uh, and move forward. I look forward, and I've said this uh, to a lot of my Democratic colleagues, I say, yeah, you like me now. Let's wait till January 21st, the day after the inauguration, and you start putting out these policies and talking to stuff, then we'll have a different conversation. And that's, that's what the country should be focused on. That's what this should be about. We've become a cult personality around one individual, one individual. And, and you just ask your audience, when you get up, but between the time you get up in the morning and the time you go to bed at night, how many times do you talk about, mention, or reference Donald Trump? And I bet it's more than you talk about, mention, or reference your own spouse or your mom. And that's not what this country should be about. There's an irony here for, for Republicans, even those who oppose President Trump. One of his legacies w appears to be right now, as we sit here, a conservative court that could be in place, Supreme Court, that could be in place for a generation. The likely overturning of the Affordable Care Act by next June and possibly the overturning of Roe versus Wade. That's, that's been a political trinity for mainstream Republicans. You must be happy with that, no? Well, look, again, that, those, those things are, are good in and of themselves. I, I, I know the justices that Mr. Trump has already appointed. I like them. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the women he's considering and planning to announce, uh, you know, for, for the for the court, um, and that's fine. I, I get that. That's I never had a dispute about that. But it matters who sits behind that resolute desk. It's not just that you give me a tax cut or you give me a Supreme Court nominee that I like. That there's there's got to be more to the to the office of the presidency than that. Uh, you know, Republicans have always talked about the value of the individuals who hold the office that we raise our children to have high regard for who sits in that, in that Oval Office. And we say to our children, one day you can grow up to be like that individual, to be president. So if this is what it looks like, I'm not telling my kids that's on the plate for them because I don't want them to be like that. How much confidence do you have in your fellow Republicans in Congress that they would put an end to whatever the president might try to do after Election Day? Zippo, because I think the standard is the Lindsey Graham standard, you know? You know, you know, hold me to the videotape, right? Play it back. 
And then the moment comes and like, well, psych. I wasn't I wasn't serious. And there's nothing you can do about it. All right. Michael Steele, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure.